is not a voting item. I'm pulling it anyway. Reports of officers six and seven. I again want to bring up something about inclusion in the city commission to the city of Bay City. Every meeting, for way longer than I've been coming to these meetings, the city of Bay City opens our message with a prayer, which we call an invocation to try to keep it legal. It's very tactically worded and identically repeated, but the subject of this prayer was drawn up to exclude large parts of the city's populace. For the Public Religious Research Institute, 21% of Bay County residents are non-religious. Adding those that are non-Christians, you're looking at one in four county residents who fit in this category. At this body, we're reading a prayer from a book resembling a Christian Bible, starting it out with a singular Almighty God. I'd like to remind the Commission that the idea that America is founded on Christian principles is false. The founders used language on the Constitution that reflects the prevailing view of the late Enlightenment period called deism. Deism is a philosophical belief in human reason as a reliable means of solving social and political problems. Not Christianity, but individual human impact. Were these founding fathers perfect? No, especially when looking at issues like slavery and women's rights. But did their deism help them come up with the ideas for a modern democratic republic to not build a government based on a king but about the will of a populace? Absolutely. This idea didn't end in the, at, at the, in the 18th century. The losers of the Civil War were upset about the deistic sentiments that were socially pu pushing to finally abolish slavery, <coughs> and they fell back on the Christian Bible to justify slavery's continuance. The women's suffrage movement was opposed by religious conservatives. The Americans that were against the Civil Rights Movement were heavily influenced by conservative religious sects such as the Southern Baptist, white Catholics, and Mormons. So why am I rambling about this? Well, I believe it's time to Bay City to end the invocation. Not only should our city be doing what's best based on provable evidence and information we have in front of us instead of hoping for something beyond proof to help us. As they say, policy, not prayer. I don't want a spectacle where the city goes, well, okay, we'll allow everyone to give an invocation because that just exacerbates the problem. In a period where Christian nationalism and Christian supremacy movements are getting mainstream coverage due to their access to government, we as a city need to take a minimum step to stop quietly excluding those who don't look up to the only one of the thousands of religions around the world. Considering the reputation of this town against, amongst a long, large portion of the citizenry, starting the meeting with a prayer hasn't improved our reputation. Let's spend that 30 seconds to be better, for better governing and better discussions. Speaking of governing effectively, there is something introduced in this meeting regarding rules for the conduct which I have pulled within these chambers. The city's rules for conduct already lead people in the community to not have faith in the body, then become apathetic to the actions and their ability for input. I want to make an example of currently in East Point, Michigan from last year that is currently in court that would force this body, to, that should force this body to change its allowance on public opinion and cross-member discourse. In that case, the mayor of East Point did what happens here, occasionally cutting off comments when speakers mention chamber members by name. There is now a lawsuit against the mayor and the city by the Foundation for Individual Expression, a free speech watchdog. In their lawsuit, they note that, and I quote, members of the public have both a constitutional right and a civic duty to debate and discuss how the government is performing, end quote. And finally, another quote, if you can't say something nice, don't say anything at all, might be a good lesson for a first grader, but the First Amendment prohibits the government from imposing that rule on its citizens, end quote. The language listed in the proposed ordinance and rule changes is vague and restricting. Not every meeting is supposed to be prim and proper. Not all individuals know the rules that get, that get them upset at this body. Using a bludgeon to make changes and hide specific intentions when there have already been clues of targeted control, especially on recordings, it's clear to me that this is just trying to mask the problems. This is leading us toward an era of anti-free speech in government that is authority in nature and needs to be recognized as such. To tie these points together, something that will be considered disruptive to certain sensitive people and could be grounds under the vague ordinance to have me removed. In American, Christians want non-Christians to pray their prayers, practice their theocratic laws, and recite their pledges, but claim that we are free to do as we please. Except we aren't. When you try to promote our points of view, we're mocked, slandered, and prayed for, whatever that means. Well, those haven't worked yet, and I can guarantee they never will. And finally, I'm going to uh, directly quote the city manager from the last meeting from a piece of the live stream that's currently on YouTube. And I'm sure this will also offend people. Quote, she honestly has no fucking idea what her role is or her role. Point of order. The fuck she is. End quote. That's a direct order. quote from a member of Point the of public. order. That type of language will not be allowed in this gallery. It is currently on the city's YouTube. On their city's YouTube right now. Th that language is currently on public record. Because that's what we're counting as public record. That members of the commission, is technically free speech. And if the commission was willing to attempt to censor me for using that word on a personal Facebook page as a member of the Charter Commission, maybe the same honor should be bestowed upon the literal executive of our city using that language on the mic in this chamber.
Thank you. Thank you.